surprises. The best band in the land, ladies and gentlemen. Number seven. Number seven. We've got a great video for you to watch. Here we arrive in Manhattan.
he entrusted me with a precious gift. And the precious gifts are you. You are important to him. I'm not saying anything in here. Amen. Well, this is one of the things that I like when people say amen. That's just, that's like, oh uh, man, it's like the food is ready. Amen. You know, praise the Lord. I, 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 I love it because it's important for us to understand that when someone allows you to come into their house when they're not here, it requires a whole lot of trust. Amen. Amen. It requires a whole lot of trust, and I don't take it lightly. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. Amen. Church is the bride of Christ. And I don't know how many of you that are married will allow another man to come into your house and sleep in the bed with your wife while you're gone. Or a, a woman that would allow another woman to come and sleep with your husband in the bed while you're gone. That don't sound right, do it? But if it's your brother or your sister, it's something totally different when you know that you can trust them. Am I saying anything? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so that's what I feel today that he trusts me to be able to speak to you today. There's a word from the Lord. Um, my wife is at my church. She's probably almost done. Uh, she's preaching and probably tearing up everything at the church over there. And um, I was just enjoying her for the short time that I was there. And I wanted to be here. And as I told Pastor Martinez, I was excited Amen. about the opportunity to come and to preach to the people that he loves Amen. so much. Amen. So let's give a round of applause for your leader. Amen. Pastor Jose, Pastor Nelly. much for them. You can never love them too much uh, because these are the people that God has chosen to be a watcher over your soul. Amen. Everybody can't be the watch. Only the pastor can be the watch. Amen. How many of you will go with me to Mark the fifth chapter? I don't want to hold you long. Pray for the Lord. But I do want to say something while I'm here that I would hope will bring some level of inspiration and excitement to you about your Christian walk. I was looking over there and I saw that door. Wow. Reputation and identity and destiny and promise and inheritance. Praise the Lord. I noticed also that the door doesn't have a doorknob on it. Say amen. 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 How many of you know that sometimes you're going to face some locked doors? Praise the Lord. You're going to pray. You're going to, you're going to come into contact with some doors that are locked, and the person that is holding the key is not going to want to let you in. And so I believe that this message will be for doors like that. Mark, the fifth chapter, I'm going to be reading from the 25th to the 34th verses. And um, it reads this way. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saith thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. 
But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing that uh, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And we're going to use for a subject on this morning, Lord, give me the push and the anointing to push through. Why don't you look at your neighbor and tell them, this is what I need God to do for me. Say, Lord, give me the anointing to push through. God bless you. There's something that you need to understand about this is that Everything that God has for you is not going to come easy. As a matter of fact, some of the things that, are, that you want the most is going to require you putting more effort into it in order to get it. Many times when we look at things like this, we wonder what it is that we have to give. What is it that we have to use? What is it that we're going to need in order to get our desires met, our needs met? And many times we fail to understand that the most important thing that you must bring to the table is your faith. But the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God. And this woman had faith that if I could just touch his clothes, I will be made whole. Understand something about that because before going into the press, before leaving her house, before coming to where Jesus was, she understood that because of her condition, she was not allowed to be out where other people were. They considered her unclean. But she said, I'm going to risk it all. I've been in this way for much too long. I've been dealing with this for 12 years. I've seen every doctor. I have given up my money. I've used up all of my insurance plan. I've gone through the donut hole. Y'all, some of y'all don't know what that is. Amen. But, but, but there are some insurances that you get uh, through uh, the marketplace that there's a donut hole. You can get your prescriptions filled up until a certain point, then you gotta pay. And then they go, she had used up all of it. And she had become nothing better. But I'm saying to you today, she understood that, that there was something that she needed. And she asked God to give her strength because you gotta understand something that when you have been losing blood for 12 years, it will weaken you. Because when we talk about blood, we talk about it as a life source. And so life had been coming out of her for 12 years. And she saw an opportunity. Look at your neighbor and tell them Jesus was passing by. And that's the thing you got to understand that Jesus is passing by. But the Bible lets me know that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. So when I'm in trouble, he is not some distant place, but he's a very present help. He's there. He's right where you need him to be in the moment you need him to be there. But many times we lose sight of the fact that he's there. Look at somebody and tell him, yes, he is there. Lord, give me the anointing to push through. There was a crowd that was around Jesus because Jesus had performed miracles and now y'all know how it is when people uh, are, are famous, everybody wants to touch them. Everybody wants to be around them. People that haven't met them have formed opinions about them. Amen. There are people that are playing football today that we don't really know them. People that are playing baseball in the World Series that we don't know them personally, but we have formed an opinion whether we like them or not based on what team they're on. on Somebody help me here. If you're a Red Sox fan, there yes. uh, you 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 could care less. Oh my God! Whether the Yankees are hitting home runs or not, huh? When you are a, a, a Patriots fan, you can care less 
if the Buffalo Bills are successful or not. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be talking about them. Uh, pastor's not here. He's the Buffalo Bills fan. Amen. But you got to understand something, that, that she was going there and people were going to see her in that state, but she did not care. There were people that were pushing in that crowd. They were pushing, trying to get to Jesus. And she could have looked and said, there's no way I'm going to get to him. There are too many people that are there. And many times we're like that even with our leaders. I was talking to a young lady at the church, and she was telling me some of the issues that she was having. I said, well, call me sometimes. Just call me. Let me know what's going on. We'll set up a meeting, this, that, and the other. She said, but pastor, you're too busy. I said, when I become too busy to pastor, I will cease from being a pastor. Oh, no, they're helping me. Don't let the devil fool you into thinking you can't get to your leader. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pick up the phone, make an appointment, and go and talk to somebody that's going to talk spirit to you, talk life to you. She saw a crowd around, and she could have said, you know what, I'm going home. I don't know about you, but you know, even when I'm at Six Flags and the line is too long, I'm not getting in the line. Are y'all hearing me? I can ride around the corner, the Golden Corral, I can ride. If I see people standing outside, I just keep on riding. Because I don't want to be in that line. But when I go to Six Flags, I give me a speed pass. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Because I'm trying to skip the line. Because if I don't get on there, I don't have the anointing to push through that crowd. I want to pass. This woman saw that there was a crowd. And it could have been a discouragement to her. But when she sized up her problem versus the size of the crowd, she said, my problem is even bigger than the crowd. And I've got to get to Jesus because I want to be made whole. Come over here, somebody. I want to be made whole. I want my situation to get better. I saw every other physician, but I want to meet the physician of physicians. I, I talked to other people about it, but nobody can speak like Jesus can because he doesn't have to give me a prescription. He can give me a miracle. Somebody ought to say amen. Prescriptions will treat the problem. Sometimes it will help you to manage the problem. But a miracle will cause the problem to dissipate. She said, I don't need another prescription. I need Jesus. And she pressed her way. And the crowd was thronging Jesus. But she understood everybody was seeking his face. I just want to be at his feet. And so she found that if I just get down on the ground. Yes. And if I just make myself small and I just crawl to him. I know that there are feet and I know I'm going to be stepped on but I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to keep crying and stepping on my hands and my hands are bloody. But I've seen bloody situations before. I'm just going to keep on pressing. People were stepping on her and they weren't even noticing that she was there. People looked down and wouldn't even recognize her presence. But what did she do? She kept on pressing because she had a push through anointing. She was anointed to push through. And I want you to know that every saint of God has the anointing to push through. Jesus is saying no matter how big the crowd, there is room for you. If you can make it to me, I can give you a miracle. My God, she pressed. And she crawled. She wasn't complaining because somebody had kicked her in the face. She wasn't complaining because somebody had stepped on her hand. She wasn't complaining because someone, you know, somebody stepped on some of our feet. We just got a reflex to cuss them out. Because somebody tells us, I need the Lord to save me some more. Yeah. Her reflex was to put her pain on the back burner. Because there was something more important that she needed. I know I'm in pain, but I know that the sooner I get to Jesus, the sooner this pain is going to leave my body. And she pressed. She didn't say if I could touch his hand. If I could touch his face. See, that's the problem that some of us have. We, we always want the hand. 
God, if you could just bless me with this. God, if you could just give me this. God, if you could see the the problem is the Bible didn't say if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my hand. <sighs> seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. She was saying, you know what? I'm not even worthy. But if I could just touch this, the healing. <laughs> the healing virtue is going to come out and I know that I'll be made whole. Let me tell you something, there's power when you allow your faith to take you. a place that you never even thought possible. But there's something about faith if you can believe it, you can receive it. And if you can trust God, God can give you the miracle that you have been seeking. Some of you, how many of y'all been waiting on the miracle? Amen. Some things that you've been waiting for God to do. God, I need you to turn my son around. God, I need you to turn my daughter around. God, I need you to turn my life around. Change my situation. God, I'm tired of this struggle. I'm tired of going through this. It seems like I'm going around in circles. And, and God is saying to you, I just need you to stop going around in circles. And I need you to get a straight line to me. Press through your problems. Press through your struggles, press through your pain and get to Jesus. Because in the midst of your press, it might be more pain you're going to have to endure. But keep on pressing. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and tell them, press. You've been anointed to push through. Touched the hem of his garment and the blood dried up. Life stopped exiting her and life came into her. And the Bible says she could feel it in the instant that she touched his garment. She knew that she was made whole. And when she just sat there, probably just blaming God, didn't want nobody to know, amen. Jesus said, Somebody touched me. touch the hem of my clothes and I might not even notice it. But Jesus said anything touching me has been anointed because of me. Can you touch it? Amen. Oh God, you, you got to hear me. Amen. Can you touch it? Because if your hands are touching him, you are anointed. And whoever touches you can be anointed as well. God wants to bless you and take you to levels that you have never known. But you got to stop looking at your problem and allowing your problem to make you stand still. You gotta look at your problem and say, I can get this problem out of my life forever. If I could just touch Jesus. There's power in his name. Salvation in his name. Deliverance in his name. Healing in his name. And she touched him. And she got her healing. How many of you have found sometimes there are great obstacles trying to get to Jesus? Sometimes you wake up on Sunday morning and you got to go through everything just to get to church. Am I saying anything? All of a sudden, you wake up and your direct TV is off. Now, before you go to church, you got to call to take care of that. The hot water is not working. Amen. Satan will use anything to try to keep you from getting your blessing. How many of you know he got a switch? How many of y'all got a switch? If they say your mama, you're going to fight. Huh? They talk about your children, you're going to fight. Huh? The devil knows how to flip our switch. You be thinking you ain't you're done with cussing and somebody cuts you off. Don't start coming out of you that you thought was never there. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, I need more of him. See, sometimes our problems come to reveal the area of our weakness that God needs to touch. Yes. Did y'all know that? You, 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 you sit there sometimes and you're thinking, God, is, he, he's, he's, he's 
He's upset with me. God is mad with me. Why would God allow me to go through this? God is saying, no, 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 no. I love you. But I understand that there is something coming down the road. And if we don't fix this right here now, you're not going to be able to deal with that then. So he's saying, look, I, 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 I'm trying to expose the areas of your weakness so that I can allow you to become strong in those areas. The devil, he's going to speak on flip the switch again. How many of y'all know that sometimes you think that you have forgiven everybody until you see that somebody? <laughs> hmm? I was doing a series on that. Forgiveness. And people began to talk about how they thought that they had forgiven everybody. But things began to come up. And they began to remember. There were people that they saw in the supermarket and they remember. But God is trying to tell you that if you want to be blessed, you got to be able to push through all of that. You got to be willing to forgive everybody that hurts you. Pastor, you just don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you something. If somebody hurts you, do you want them to be the reason why you miss him? The person that did you wrong now is going to be doing you even more wrong if you allow them to continue to be on your heart as somebody that you feel that you can't love. You gotta push through and love everybody. Look at somebody tell me there's obstacles everywhere. I keep talking about the switch because how many of y'all still know you got some switches because they get flipped every now and then. But, but this is what God wants to do for us. He wants to rewire our house. <laughs> you ever go into a room and it has two switches and sometimes you flip it up and the light comes, goes off. Sometimes you flip it down and the light comes on because the other one is down and when this one has to be up and that one's down, come on here somebody. Yeah. Amen. But, but God is saying, I want to rewire your house because the devil is going to come and flip your switch. But every time he flips a switch in your house, it ought to call you to pray. Yes. Every time he flips a switch, it ought to cause a praise to come out of your mouth. What he thought was going to cause cussing causes praising. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. But this is what happens when you push through and get to Jesus. Because every area of your life that needed healing Notice what happened to this woman. The Bible did not say she was made healed. The Bible says she was made whole. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Lord, I don't want to just be healed. I want to be whole. I don't want to be healed in this area, but still have areas that are hurting. God, I want to be whole. So, so this means that not only was her she healed physically, but the emotional scars that were left behind by the people. Anybody ever been dogged out before? Or was something you didn't have anything to do with? Amen. Something you couldn't help? Amen. But people got you anyway? Right. All of that was healed. She was made whole. And if you want to be made whole, the thing you've got to do is learn that you have the power to push through. Never tell yourself, I can't make it. Death and life are the power of the tongue. Never tell yourself, you're not going to make it. It's not going to get better. That doesn't come out of the mouth of the saints. The mouth of the saints is to understand that you are the prophet over your life. Death and life are the power of the tongue, then you need to speak life to your own life. Oh, we will get through this. Things are going to get better. This is just a season in my life, but the season has got to change for the better. Come on here. Amen. Tell your neighbor, speak life to your life. Life to your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want that push through anointing so that there will be nothing that can keep me from Jesus. Am I helping anybody? Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them nothing can stop me. Watch us separate us from the love of God. You got to understand, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Only you. Say amen. 
Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. Yes. How many God had some discouragement recently? Amen. You've been discouraged about some things. Amen. I speak life to that issue. This Bible says she had an issue of blood. I believe we all have certain issues with, uh, of blood. Amen. Because we have not tapped into the blood of Jesus Christ. He covers sin. He covers faults. Will we accept him as Savior? Look at your neighbor tell him, I got to put him first. Problems past. Jesus present. If he's here, my miracle is here. If he's here, my blessing is here. If he's here, I'm going to get what I want. Why would I let Jesus be in my midst and I know he can do anything but fail and I might get what I want from him? But you don't have to do it his way. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. That's my message for today. That's my message for today. Amen. I need you to understand that you have been anointed. Obstacles are big, situations seem unsolvable, mountains seem unclimbable, valleys seem uncrossable, but I want you to understand that no matter what things seem like, there is a reality that God can do anything but fail. What issues are going on in your life that God can't fix? Look at your neighbor, tell them nothing. God can do anything but fail. Are you hearing me? And you are important to God. You are important to God. You hear me? Amen. Why don't you just say that to yourself? I am important to God. I am important to God. Well, the will make you believe that because of the things that you've done, that somehow God doesn't love you. But this Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Yes. Huh? If he gave his son for us while we were yet sinners, he who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? If he gave us Jesus, he'll give us healing. If he gave us Jesus, he'll give us finances. If he gave us Jesus, he'll heal our bodies. He'll save our children. He'll save our, our family. If he gave us Jesus. What that means is that he gave us his best first. It takes nothing from him to give us the rest later. Oh, yeah. That was good to me. Maybe, maybe you didn't catch that one. But that one was good to me. If he gave us his best first, what would make him say, I'm not going to give them the rest later? That's right. He gave you Jesus. And through him, we get life. Through him, we get say you can't live hopefully. You can't live saying you can do this. He wouldn't make it hard for you. As a matter of fact, you don't have to do it alone. He said, I know I'm with you always. Am I saying anything? Everybody standing to your feet.
They're worth more. Some of it is that because of their name. What's your name? Saint of God, what's your name? Believer in Christ, what's your name? If you are a child of God, then your value has just went up.
Oh God, those with that humility, that mind that wants to work, God, I pray that He will give them the desire of their heart. And I pray that the ministry will grow as a result of the lives that are a part of this ministry. God, I rebuke every hindrance, everything that will come to bring hindrance to this ministry's growth. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Even in the lives of the people of God, those things that will hinder them from being able to be what they have been born to be, what they have been called to be, what you have purposed them to be. God, I pray that you will give them the strength to push through. In the name of Jesus. Look on our leaders, oh God. Look on our leaders. Apostle, our babes, his wife, oh God. Pastor Martinez, give them safe passage, oh God. Keep them safe on the seas. God, bring them back to us. Oh God, ready to do business for the King. God, by all their way, I pray, God, that you will calm the minds of the saints. Give them to know that they are important in the kingdom. And Lord, I pray that you will raise them up for a time such as this. In the name of Jesus. Those that are in the background that you hear today, oh God, that feel that they are not enough, that they are not good enough. God, I pray that you will touch them over the course of this next year. And God, I pray that you will bring them to the forefront. I rebuke all fear. Yes, Lord. And I call purpose forth in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the church say amen. amen. Come put your hands together.
But what I heard in my ear is there's a celebration. And with a lot going on, Gwen, I didn't hear the name, but there's there's a birthday girl. Jessica. Oh, it's just I hear it now. I hear it now. <laughs> so let's let's all stand up. Let's sing happy birthday.
We might not be living through it, but these movies could be powerful testimonies to help others see what others have gone through. And if I remember right, I think this is based on a true story. So Lord God, I just say thank you for all you're doing. I thank you for our pastors, our apostles. I pray for their safety while they're out. I pray that you allow them to have fun, to be restful, Lord God, to de-stress, and to be coming home safely, Lord God. I pray for Pastor Bateman and his congregation, Lord God, that you bless them always. For the friendship you have allowed us to have with them in their congregation. Lord, keep them safe in all things they do as well. And I just say, in your great name, on this beautiful day, let everything go according to your will. In Jesus' name we all pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen.